Good morning and happy Sabbath, everybody. So glad to see each and every single one of you out here this morning on this beautiful, sunshiny, and warm Sabbath morning. Um, for those of you that are at home watching, we're so glad that you have joined us as well, and we just hope that you're all blessed. I'm going to open our service this morning with a call to worship from Psalm 150. If you'd like to follow along in your Bibles with me, Psalm 150. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. Praise him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise him with the harp and lyre. Praise him with timbrel, timbrel and dancing. Praise him with the strings and pipe. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And on this beautiful day, you cannot help but praise the Lord, right? Please join us in singing hymn 25, Praise the Lord, His Glories Show. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. It's good to see so many of you here. Um, today's going to be a treat. Um, I'd just like to welcome everyone here, um, our visitors and, and those who um, come every week. Those who are also watching online, welcome to everyone. I'd like to call up Christine for an announcement. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Oh boy. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to figure out how to pitch this book to you, <laughs> um, so to say. Um, it's a powerful book, and the church has offered it to your members. Um, I had been praying and praying. As we had a powerful Sabbath school, by the way, this morning. Um, mm -hmm. But there was just one thing that wasn't mentioned, and that was the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And this book is the Holy Spirit. And I prayed for it. I've been praying to God and asking because I said there's something missing in my faith experience. I don't know what it is. I just feel really something's not complete. And he answered my prayer because he led me um, to a sermon. And then that sermon led me to another sermon, that sermon that had this book. And I'm like, okay. Well, I couldn't wait to buy the book. I just had went and downloaded it on uh, my computer. And... It's been three weeks now, and I'm just so joyful because the Lord has shown me me. 
Because usually I look at the church, but God says, no, it's you. It's you. And so Amen. the church is offering. I was trying to figure out what to say up here, how to get you to pick up this book, because you never know, um, and share stories. They have powerful testimonies in here of what the Holy Spirit has done for them. Because we, we do a lot of things. In fact, I'm going to tell you, it's just not for adults. It's for the youth. There's a powerful testimony in here about a teacher who had this, she called it, ruffian child. Um, and um, the book changed the child. Within a year, the child was baptized, gave his life to Jesus Christ because she gave him this book. And so it's out there in the hallway. Um, you know, if you... If there's a desire in your heart that just something that's missing, that you feel it's missing, and a piece of the puzzle, um, because this gift was given to us in the books of the Acts of the Apostles, um, it was given to us a gift that's free, that really, really works, and it is really working in my life, really working, and so the church is offering this to you. Um, they're out there in the, the hallway for you. Um, pick it up, and for the youth, it's not just for the adults, it's not just for the elderly, it's for young people. This, the child was 13 years old, and he was 15, 14 when he gave his life to Christ. You know, and not that it means anything, he was a pastor's child. Not that it means anything, you know, but um, the book, and the teacher, and the prayers and everything. But the most important thing that helped him was the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, steps to personal revival. Steps to personal revival. Steps to personal revival. You don't. It's, it's, how many sitting back there? There's 25 back there. Back. 25 of these. I had prayed and God put a number in me for 25, so we. If you need more. We, we can get more. Yeah. They're, they're like $2. And you could even go on your computer, go to this website, Steps to Personal Revival, and download it. it That's what I did. Like I said, I couldn't wait it. Couldn't wait for it. And so. It, it's, I'm serious, this has really changed my life. It really has changed my life, and it's gonna continue. I'm doing it with my prayer partner, and we do it every week, because you can't just read it one time. It says, I can't pronounce the word that goes with it, but you have to read it more than once. And I've, in the week, I read it five times before we end up talking on Tuesday and discussing it. And when I read the scriptures, when I read the passages, I said, I have read that so many times. Why didn't I see that before? Right. Why? And every time I read the passages in John 15 and in Romans 8, and I'm like, it's all about the Holy Spirit. And I'm like, oh, God, thank you. So just wanted mm -hmm. to share that with you. Um, on that same note about personal or revival, spiritual revival, um, on the men's prayer group, men's um, uh, I, 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 God has opened my eyes uh, to this one thing, and this is this, and I've said this before. Every time the church asks me to do something, uh, I think they're asking me to do something instead of start thinking like this. God is asking me to let him change me. That's what he's doing. I always say, what, what do you want me to do now? Okay, I'll do it, Lord. Okay, I'll do it. And I pump myself up. But I'm noticing that God is asking me to let him change me. And that's what's happening. And um, so this, here's the blessing. The men's prayer group or the men's group or the men's ministry, I've been blessed. Paul, I think, uh, I might um, butcher your last name. Spalita, did, did I say it right? Okay, Paul Spalita did it in January. Uh, Dan Flanagan did it in February. Um, David Espinoza, he did March. Steve Hubble did it last Sabbath up here, oh boy, woo, uh, in April. David Espinoza has chose to do it next month. Paul Fiorello has chose to do it the first Sabbath 
in June. Uh, we have July, August, September, October, November. It's a man every month, a man every month that 9.30 to 9.45, 10 o'clock space before Sabbath school, give your testimony about what your faith and what prayer has done in your life. Uh, it's been so powerful. I mean, I've cried at almost every last one of them. When I see a man come up here and share what has happened in his life, uh, what prayer has done, a little testimony, and it makes me break down. It gives me hope. And, and I, I, I pray, the Lord is telling me, I pray that us as men in this church would be able to do this and strengthen other men where we're weak, uh, strengthen our children. Uh, we're trying to show that uh, there should, the comfort zone, there shouldn't be, there should be us, you know, as men leading out in this church for our families and the church, or our next generation is going to be lost. So I pray you guys help me out, help the Lord out, help the church out. Um, I will be coming to you guys. Um, so you can run if you want to. <laughs> but I'm going to come because I got more people, more slots uh, uh, to fill for the rest of the year. It's going to go until uh, they, uh, big pardon? Forever. Well, well, maybe, but I just know until uh, the nomination, nominating committee tell me I'm not doing this anymore in, in what, a year and a half from now. <laughs> but this is going to work. It seems to Seems what the Lord wants. Yes. All right, thank you. And real quick, you nominated Terry and I as the prayer ministry, and it's not our ministry; it's mm -hmm. the church's ministry. Yeah. We need you. We need you. Everybody needs this. Yeah. So after and every Sabbath after the service downstairs in the fireside room, we meet there to pray. It's a community prayer, community prayer. So please. All right. Thanks, Christine and Terry. Um, there are a couple other things I want you to be aware of. So next Sabbath will be Education Sabbath. So the kids at the school will be doing the service. And so that's always a wonderful treat. So please be here to support them. Um, and that, that will be a blessing, I'm sure. Um, another thing I want to point out is that if there's anyone um, graduating this spring and you'd like to highlight them, um, you can send um, pictures to Karen. Um, by the 27th of this month, and that can be displayed in our bulletin or on the screen. Um, I'll call up Pastor Nelson for another announcement, and I'll let him take it home. So again, happy Sabbath, everyone. We're so excited you're here to worship with us today. We want to welcome you. I also want to just reiterate something that we said last week. Um, this as we are redoing church and things are coming um, back together and we're kind of reinventing things, um, the permission to be weird is fine. Um, I don't know about you. Have you ever tried to t shake somebody's hands nowadays? Okay. So sometimes you get a fist bump. Sometimes you get a handshake. Sometimes you get an elbow. Sometimes you go like, don't touch me. Um, so just kind of f go with the flow. Don't force it. Um, and make sure that if somebody wants a hug, they can get a hug, but if they don't want one, please don't give them a hug. Um, that would be a little bit intrusive, and we want people to feel at home and with our family. And then the last one that I said last week, too, if there's babies coming, which there are people that have had babies recently, please don't touch their face, and please don't touch their hands, because parents really get a little uncomfortable when you touch their hands and their face, because they always put their uh, fists in their mouth and their fingers in their mouth. And it just helps them keep a little bit more healthy. And it also, um, I, I will admit, as a parent, it made me feel a little bit more secure that my child wouldn't get every disease out there, even if that was not true, because uh, my child would slobber all over everything and eat everything. So, but it, it does make us feel a little bit better as parents that, you know, the, the hands and the face of the child aren't touched. You can touch them on the shoulder and on the head and stuff like that. But it's, um, it's something that parents really would enjoy you uh, helping them as they raise their children. And again, I will say, it is a very strange world we live in right now. So be very patient with one another. If they have a mask on, if they don't have a mask on, I don't care, we love you and dearly, and we are glad that you are here today. 
and we just want to welcome you. It's children's story. Kids, you want to come down? We usually do take up offering, I forgot. Um, So adults, if you want, there'll be three things back there. There's going to be one for your normal tithes and offerings. There'll be this one for the school kids. And then there'll be another one. Terry is going to uh, have a time in the middle that you can contemplate that. We'll make sure that they come up here and if you want a donation uh, to the ministry that he has too. Because it's very important this time of uh, year to remember that um, as we do have contributions that uh, things are still going and we're trying to make sure that our church is functioning and that the ministries that we have are still functioning too. So we'll have those three things available as you, as you leave. Okay, how many of you have ever played a harmonica? You know what a harmonica is? No, some of you are looking, I have no idea. I forgot I have one. It's about this long and you blow into it and then if you slide it one way, it plays notes that are lower and slide it the other way, it's notes that are higher. Billy wanted one really bad. He wanted one really bad because he had heard somebody playing it and he wanted it so bad. So he talked to his mom and dad and he said, really, I would like to buy one. And they kind of scratched their heads and they're like, well, I'm not sure where we get one of those. Maybe you'd have to go into a catalog, which is kind of like the internet, except for it's a book. And uh, you have to look and see if they have one. And uh, I think it was the old Sears catalog. And he would look through it and he found one that he really liked. And so he saw how much money it was and he was like, I don't have that much money. So he asked his mom and dad, can I have, can I have this amount of money? And they're like, we, we just don't have it right now. And you're like, man, that's kind of cheap. How, how would you not afford that? Well, it was a, a few years back. And he says, oh, what can I do? So if you needed some money, what would you do? Save up money in your piggy bank. You can find money on the ground. Grandmas and grandpas give you money, aunts and uncles, mom and dad. And, you know, you would do a lot of things. Well, he decided that not only that, but he would go and get a job. Well, he couldn't really do a whole lot except for he knew how to mow the lawn. And so he was going to mow the lawn of a lot of different people. And they said they'd give him just a little bit of money each time. And he was like, oh, that's not quite enough. So he mowed the lawns and mowed the lawns, and it took all summer. I mean, this must be a really expensive harmonica, because it was like, I don't know, maybe nowadays things are a little less expensive, but he would mow and mow it, and he was all tired, and he was like, oh, I've done this all summer. I think I've got it. So he started counting out the dimes and nickels and pennies and everything, a couple dollars now and then. He's like, oh, I think next week I'll be able to go get one. So he worked really hard that week and he put all his money together and he was proudly put it in his wallet and he was on his way to, to the store and his mom was saying, be careful, I don't want you to get your clothes dirty. And he was on his way and he looked over and he saw his favorite fishing spot. And he was like, ooh, I'm just gonna go down and I'm gonna look. Let's see, I think there's fish there today. I'm gonna go look and on the way back, I'll make sure that I stop by my friend's house and get the fishing poles and we're gonna go down there. So he went and looked. There was a really big one he saw and he was like, oh, I'm gonna go back there and I'm gonna go fishing and I'm gonna gonna get that fish. So he went to the store with all this in his head and he was like, oh yeah, I can't wait till I'm done. Ooh, but I've really been working for this. And he pulled out his wallet. His wallet. His wallet, Uh uh-oh wallet 
Oh no, his wallet's gone. What do you do when your wallet's gone? Panic! <laughs> Freak out! And then he decided, okay, now where, what did I do? And he followed his footsteps all back and he looked and he looked down by the, the water and he was like, oh no, I wonder. He looked all around, all around, he couldn't find it. He went home, he looked everywhere, couldn't find it. Oh, I worked all summer for this. What in the world? And so he got down on his knees. Sometimes we need to do that first. But he got down on his knees. He said, dear Jesus, I don't know what I did with that. Could you help me out? I really would like this. Could you help me out? He got up. I'd love to tell you it was right underneath his bed, but it was not. A day later, somebody called his parents and said, you know what? I found something. It was on the street the other day. And it had a bunch of money in it. It was a little wallet. Um, I had some ID in there. Um, it says that it's maybe yours or your child's. And he was like, yes. Yes, it was. It's mine. It's mine. And he started jumping up and down. And Mom and dad were like, why are you jumping up and down? It's mine. It's mine. I prayed to Jesus because I lost it. And I don't know what happened to it. On the way, I guess it had dropped out of his pocket on the street. And somebody had picked it up. So he got all the money out. And he said, thank you to the person over and over again. And he went down to the store and he bought his what? Harmonica. And he started playing and he didn't know how to play yet. So he had to learn a little bit. And he started playing some more and he got better and better and better. And he always remembered every time he played that little harmonica about the thing that Jesus did for him. He had somebody pick up a wallet and give it back to him with all the money. How many of you have ever lost something and then the money's gone? Mm -hmm. Well, this person was an honest person and Jesus sent them to find the money. So every time he played that harmonica, he remembered what Jesus had done for him. You can go back to your seats now. everyone. I'm here to talk about the offering for today. I uh, got a fun little story here, um, but let's start. Uh, so we worship God with our tithe and offerings in response to the call to acknowledge God as master. Acknowledging the real master can sometimes be a struggle. Let's take a look at the story. So the captain of a ship looked into the night and saw faint lights in the distance. Immediately, he told his signalman to send a message. Alter your course 10 degrees south. Promptly, a return message was received. Alter your course 10 degrees north. The captain was mad. His command had been ignored. So he sent a second message. Alter your course 10 degrees south. I am the captain. Soon, another message was received. Alter your course 10 degrees north. I am Seaman Third Class Jones. Immediately, the captain sent a third message, knowing the fear it would evoke. Alter your course 10 degrees south. I am a battleship. Then the reply came, alter your course 10 degrees north. I am a lighthouse. <laughs> <laughs> the system of tithing was established to acknowledge God as Lord and Master. Who is the Lord and Master of your life? Have you acknowledged God's call for you? The Wisconsin Conference seeks to be a light in a dark world, turning others to the real master, Jesus Christ. Our tithe and offerings this week will support this commitment and further advance the work God has given us here. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thanks for such a great day. What a nice warm day. I'll, I'll take the humidity uh, over snow. Um, please, uh, may our actions and giving reveal that we honor you as Lord and Master. We ask, Father, that our churches will stand as a lighthouse in a dark world, guiding others to the real master. Thanks for a great day, and uh, please bless the pastor. Thanks. Amen. Oh, and quick note. <laughs> offering is in the back. Uh, if you want to give physical offering, also you can uh, give offering online. 
on that note, please rise and join us in singing hymn 248, Oh, How I Love Jesus. As we sing our next song, we're going to sing it contemplate, contemplatively, I think that's the correct word, with humility and quietness, because this will be our song right before we come before the master in prayer.
We're going to have congregational prayer now. And those of you that could kneel, if you could, please, and join me in prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, you bring us here today to be able to worship in this house, and it is a blessing. The smiles, the hugs, the greetings, the songs that carry your word through our heart. Lord, we know there are some that are not able to be here today, and we ask for your prayer and blessings for them as well. Lord, as we search our hearts with these words that you give us, in this praise time, we ask that you help us to carry it throughout the week. Please be with those that are suffering physically and mentally. Lord, those that are hurting, we ask that you give mercies to those that are healing, and we carry them in our heart as well. Please be with us. Help us to carry this message that you give us through song and word, through the rest of the week. In your name we pray, amen. Good morning, church. Our um, scripture today is from Psalms 19.1. Um, the heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Good morning, everybody. It's really great to see you all. I've been here a couple of times before. I don't know if anybody remembers me. I was talking to somebody earlier this morning that said they remembered me, but many years ago, I brought my family a uh, gospel band called Bless the Maker here, and uh, we put a program out for you. I think that uh, my partner, Mark Stauffer, and I may have come here as well a few years ago, but it's great to be back here again. I look forward to it, and... Uh, for those that don't know, I'm Terry Howard, and I'm from Marshfield, up there in the center of the state. And uh, when I'm there, I go to the Marshfield Church, which isn't real often, because I am involved in a music ministry as well as I travel a good bit. But uh, Pastor Nelson, I was telling the story this morning to the kids about harmonicas. This is a harmonica. <laughs> and we didn't even talk about it, so. <laughs> but. Uh, this song is called Longing for Home, and aren't we all longing for home? The song was written by a gentleman that had lost his family and, uh, in a tragic accident, and he wrote this song. It's called Longing for Home. o'er the dark waters we glide my heart has grown weary and lone I long with thee to abide dear Savior I'm longing for home longing for home I'm longing for home my heart is longing for home Longing for home, I'm longing for home. Dear Savior, I'm longing for home. How sweet will be our reside with loved ones forever to roam. In thee I'll always confide. Dear Savior, I'm longing for home, 
Longing for home, I'm longing for home. My heart is longing for home. Longing for home, I'm longing for home. Dear Savior, I'm longing for home. trials await how many more tears to be sown before she'll enter that gate dear savior i'm longing for home longing for home i'm longing for home my heart is longing for home Longing for home, I'm longing for home. Dear Savior, I'm longing for home. I'd like to read a verse to you. It's Psalms 100, verses 1 and 2. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Now, normally, I bring along four or five musicians with me, but COVID has changed a lot of things in the world, and that's one of them. A lot of musicians are still uncomfortable about coming out and singing and playing in front of audiences. I think the Lord will protect me. I take good care of my health, and I, I want to pursue this ministry. So what I've done, I've been opening for, for other people that use backtracks, such as the King's Heralds and other people, and I've adopted that. And I got thinking, you know, I want to change it just a little bit. So. I took my recordings, and I talked to my recording engineer, and we were able to make backtracks out of my own recordings. So we've included some of those in today's program as well. This first song is called, He Touched Me, and the Lord touches us in many ways, not only physically, but also emotionally. We've gone through an emotional roller coaster through this COVID experience, and prayer will cure that for you. Go to the Lord and ask him to touch you. This is called, He Touched Me. Shackled by a heavy burden Neath the load of guilt Thank you. 
she's claimed to make me whole I will never cease to praise him I'll shout it while eternity rolls He touched me Somebody asked me one time, did you wash your guitar and it shrank? No, that's the answer to that, no. This is a mandolin, and it was made in 1914 by Gibson. And when I get to be that old, if I can still sound this good, I'll be happy. But this is uh, one of the songs that came off of one of my recordings, it's called Little Mountain Church. So many of us met the Lord in a, in a small church, a small community church. And that's what this song is about. There's a little mountain church in my thoughts of yesterday Where friends and family gather for the Lord Where an old-fashioned preacher taught the straight and narrow way For what few coins a congregation could afford Dressed in all our Sabbath best, sit on pews of solid oak And I remember how our voices filled the air Mama sounded like an angel on those high soprano notes And when the Lord is called up yonder, I'll be there Looking back now, that little mountain church house Has become my life's cornerstone It was there in that little mountain church house I first heard the word based my life upon Day Sunday singings, dinners on the ground, any were the souls that were revived. While the brothers and the sisters who gone on to glory land slept in peace in the maple grove nearby. Looking back now, that little mountain church house has become my life's cornerstone. It was there in that little mountain church house I first heard the word of ace my life upon oh, one more time looking back now that little mountain church house has become my life's cornerstone it was there in that little mountain church house I first heard the word of ace my life upon oh, take us home
In the last few years, I've gone through an experience that has renewed my relationship with, with God. And when I went through that experience, I felt humble. And many times when we do this, we ask, am I worthy? And that's what this song is about. It's called, Why Me? Why me? What have I ever done? To deserve even one of the pleasures I've known. Tell me, Lord, what did I ever do that was worth loving you or the kindness you showed? Lord, help me, Jesus, I wasted it, so help me, Jesus, I know what I am, but now There's a way that I can repay all I've taken from you. Maybe, Lord, I can show someone else what I've been through myself on my way back to you. Lord, help me, Jesus, I wasted it, so help me, Jesus, I know what I am, but now that I know that I've needed you, so help me, Jesus, my soul's in Now that I know that I needed you, so help me, Jesus, my soul's in your hand. Jesus, my soul's in your hand. John 8, 12 says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. I wonder so aimless life filled with sin I wouldn't let my dear Savior in Then Jesus came like a stranger in the night Praise the Lord, I saw the light I saw the light, I saw the light No more dark no more now Now I'm so happy No sorrow inside Praise the Lord I 
Like a blind man, I wandered alone. Worries and fears, I cling for my own. Then, like the blind man that God gave back his sight, praise the Lord, for I saw the light. I saw the light. I saw the light. No more dark. No more now Now I'm so happy No sorrow inside Praise the Lord I saw the light How about those fiddles? I was a fool to wander and stray Straight is the gate and narrow the way Now I have traded the wrong for the right Praise the Lord, for I saw the light I saw the light, I saw the light No more darkness no more now Now I'm so happy No sorrow inside Praise the Lord I saw the light Praise the Lord I saw the light Thank you. Right at the beginning of the pandemic, my, my father died. And when he did, he left us his Bible. And my dad and I really didn't get along that well. He taught me to think for myself as he did. And that can cause conflict, which it did. But the last several years of his life, we got along well, very well. He gave me his Bible. And all the notes he made in the margin, the highlighting he did, the underlining he did, really let me look into his life with God and understand a lot of things I didn't understand before that. And that's what this song is about. It's called The Family Bible. There's a family Bible on the table Each page is worn and hard to read But the family Bible on the table Will ever be my memory at the end of day when work was over and when the evening was done dad would read to us from the family bible and we count on many blessings one by one. I can see us sitting round the table when from the family Bible Dad would read. I can hear my mother softly singing Rock of Ages Rock of Ages cleft for me 
This old world of ours is full of trouble But oh, so much better it could be If we found more Bibles on the table And mothers singing rock of ages cleft for me I can see us sitting round the table When from the family Bible Dad would read I can hear my mother softly singing Rock of ages, rock of ages cleft for me There's so much anger in the world today. The, the war that's going on in the Ukraine. Innocent people dying. But it's not the only one in the world. There's about a dozen civil wars going on in the world right now. People filled with anger and hate. And what a day that will be when the Lord returns and we have peace peace again. This song I heard when I was at Wisconsin Academy. And uh, today, I, <laughs> I'm so happy to have my roommate here, Jack Woggins here from, from Virginia visiting. And uh, happy to have him here. But this song I heard at Wisconsin Academy, and it's resonated with me ever since. It's called Peace in the Valley. Well, I'm tired and so weary, but I must go along till the Lord comes and calls me, calls me away. Well, the morning is bright and the land. And the night, the night is fair as the day. Yes. There will be peace in the valley only someday. There will be peace in the valley for me. No sorrow, no trouble I see. There will be peace, peace in the valley for me. Someday. Well, the bear and the fox, we jump. And the wolf, he'll be tame. And the lions, the lions will lay down with the lambs, praise the Lord. The beast from the wild will be led by a child. And I'll be changed, changed from this creature that I am. There will be peace in the valley for me someday. There will be peace in the valley for me, oh Lord, I pray. There will be no sadness, 
no sorrow, no trouble I see. There will be peace, peace in the valley for me. This next song is another one that I pulled off of uh, an album. Now involved in my family band was my brother Mike, my wife, Carol, and our children. And on December the 19th, <laughs> my, my brother died. And uh, he's missed. But we've been able to capture his artistry on the piano through these backtracks. And this is one of them. It's called Crying in the Chapel. You saw me crying in the chapel. The tears I cried were tears of joy. I know the meaning of content. I know I will be with the Lord Just a plain and simple chapel Where humble people go to pray I pray the Lord I grow stronger As I live from day to day I searched, I searched and I searched, I searched but I couldn't find a place on earth to find peace of mind now I'm happy in the chapel where people are of one accord yes we gather in the chapel just to sing and praise the Lord You'll search and you'll search But you'll never find A place on earth to find peace of mind Take your troubles to the chapel Get down on your knees and And your burdens will be lighter And you'll surely find the way You will surely find the way We just passed through Easter, and I added this song in honor of, of Christ's gift to us on the cross. This is an old hymn, and I love it very much, and I'm sure that you'll recognize it. It's called The Old Rugged Cross. <laughs> On a hill far away Stood an old rugged cross The emblem of suffering and shame And I love that old cross Where the deer stand best For a word Sinners was slain. So I cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. 
John 14, 1 to 3 is one of my favorite verses because it just fills my mind with images and I can just imagine Christ and the disciples in the last years of his, uh, in the last months actually of his, uh, his ministry and they stopped for lunch in my mind under a tree and somebody says, Christ, you're always talking about leaving. Where are you going? And can we come with you? And he says to them, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. In other words, he's saying, I got this. I got this, all right? I'm coming back to get you. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. So this song, we used to call it the pie song because it was my mother's favorite song. And whenever we put it in the program, we could count on a pie. So we called it the pie song. But in this song, my brother is at the peak of his artistry. Listen for his piano. It's, uh, it's quite a blessing. Mansion over the hilltop. I'm satisfied with just the cars below a little silver and a little gold but in that city where the ransom will shine I want a gold one that silver mine I've got a mansion just over the hilltop in that bright land where we'll never go And someday yonder we will never more wander But walk the streets that are here as gold Though often tempted, tormented and tested And like the prophet, my fill was shown find here no permanent dwelling I know he'll give me a mansion my own I've got a mansion just over the hilltop in that bright land where we'll never grow old and someday yonder we will never more wander but walk the street that our here is no taking 
mic. Matthew 24, 36 says, but about that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, only the Father knows when that day will occur. And I am waiting for it. Are you, aren't you all waiting for it? Well, many years ago, my brother and I wrote a wrote songs for Nashville and Los Angeles. And one day my oldest daughter came home and she said, the school is asking if you guys will write a Christian song. And I thought, well, that's new. Uh, let's try that. So we, we watched the news to get inspiration, find out what's going around in the world. And we came up with this song. And of course, things have gotten so much better since then. You know, it's a, a better world than it was. But we were asking ourselves, we've heard all of our lives that Christ is returning. But when? I mean, all these horrible things that were even going on back then and today, are you kidding me? Uh, when are you coming back? And that seemed like the, the line, the reoccurring line that, should go in this song. And so we wrote this song called When Are You Coming Back? When are you coming back? Jesus We're so tired and want to go home The world is falling apart all over there's only one who can save us that's you alone cries can be heard from the children who are dying from hunger each day Cries can be heard from all over the world. Will you come soon? We all pray. When are you coming back, Jesus? We're so tired. And want to go home The world is falling apart All over There's only one who can 
to save us, that's you alone. We're here, Lord, the true and faithful. What we all have are worries and woes. Events are in stride with what you prophesied. We just all hope we're ready to go. When are you coming back? Jesus, we're so tired and want to go home. The world is falling apart all over. There's only one who can save us, that's you alone. There's only one who can save us, and that's you alone. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for being here. We ask you now to go with us, keep us safe and healthy. And bring us back again next week to be here with our church family to worship you. Amen.